So these are two things we recommend you don't discuss with your vet because they might cause arguments, weird looks or slight aggravation in, in your vet and you don't really want to develop that sort of relationship with them. Word of caution is if you get hold of a vet and they are a good vet, please keep them and treasure them because they are very hard to come by. So these are two things to never tell them and to never discuss with them. The first one is, hey, I feed raw food to my dog. And this is something that can go down very, very different pathways. The first one is, and we see this every day because we specialize in nutrition, is that most people do raw food incorrectly. They do not understand how to feed raw. They only feed a single protein and they fail to understand a dog's diet. The dog will need offal, a dog will need bone and a dog will need a rotation of different proteins and that's how you do raw properly. Another reason is that they may not understand it or want to understand it. What do I mean by that? Well, sometimes they will say things like salmonella or they will just say things like, hey, you need to be aware of this or hey, you need to be aware of that. And whilst these concerns are somewhat reasonable, they are not definite when it comes to raw feeding. And if you are a responsible raw feeder, you will probably be aware and handle the raw food you give your dog correctly. And we encourage you to be cautious and to follow procedure whenever you feed raw. Another reason why they don't like raw food is because they will peddle their own agenda. What do I mean by that? Well, I was recently at the vet with my cat and uh, I got prescribed this. And uh, if you read the ingredients, you will see meat and animal derivatives and you will see various sugars. And call me crazy, but I don't think meat and animal derivatives and various sugars are better for my cat or for a dog than proper food. So a lot of people fail to realize and understand that vets are businesses and they are there to make money and sometimes they're there to make money at our expense. Peddling foods like Purina, like Hills, like Royal Cannon is doing your dog a disservice and the only thing you need to do is read the ingredients on the back of the bag of food for you to realize these foods are complete rubbish and I am going to link down in the description a nutrition blog on how to feed raw properly and what to look up for whenever someone tells you that you need a prescription diet for your dog. So that's, that's the third thing within the raw spectrum. They want you to feed what they sell and they want to make money at your expense. And this is a bit of a shame because vets are there to look after us and look after our dog. And dogs these days are not just dogs. They're full family members and they are babies. They are our babies. So understand they are there to make money and sometimes they won't have the best interest for your dog. The second thing you may not want to discuss with your vet will be, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Vet, I don't want to subscribe to your flea and worming treatment that you send me monthly. A lot of companies will now make it really, really easy and simple for you to set up a direct debit and for you to get a prescription or a subscription service at your door every month with flea and worming tablets in most occasions. And let me ask you this question. If your dog is a pet, if your dog spends most of their life indoors and they are not a working dog, they aren't out there potentially catching worms or catching fleas. There's no real risk of them catching fleas. Do they need 
monthly treatments for something that might or might not happen, my suggestion is they do not need it. And putting unnecessary chemicals in your dog's body is probably one of the worst things you can do. I mean, you could do it for yourself if you medicate yourself, but doing it for your dog when your dog cannot choose wouldn't be my best advice, I don't think, because they might not need all these monthly treatments and these monthly chemicals. So those are two things I would not discuss with my vet. One would be I'm a raw feeder and the second one I do not want a monthly flea and tick treatment for my dog. Thank you very much. What other topics do you think you avoid when you interact with your vet? I'm very curious to know. So please comment below.